He had this idea to uh, to do an experiment to see what it would really take to run our RV air conditioner off the grid here in the RV without running a generator, uh, you know, or definitely not plugged into shore power to really see what it would take and, and how long we might be able to actually run the air conditioner for. Because based on the number of questions and comments I get on this topic, I know you really want to know the answer to that too. And so do I because I've never actually tried it. Now, based on the uh, size system that we have, you know, with the 400 amp hours of lithium batteries, 2000 watt pure sine inverter, and uh, a fair amount of solar on the roof, you know, it's technically feasible to do so. But is it really a practical solution running an air conditioner off of just batteries and inverter? Well, today we're gonna find out and see what we can learn. Now, if you've been doing your homework on air conditioners, then you may have already spotted a flaw in this system that'll prevent us from actually running the air conditioner with our 2000 watt inverter. Now, remember that our AC unit actually runs on AC power, like household 120 volt AC power. So when we're just running from our batteries, that AC power is actually generated from the inverter here. And uh, what's unique about an AC unit with a compressor inside is that it creates this huge surge of energy just to fire up that compressor and then it tapers off. But that initial surge of energy is, is well over what this um, inverter can actually supply. So I would uh, either, I don't want to buy a really enormous inverter to be able to run this AC unit. So there are other options and the um, the other option is actually to either uh, pick up this device that you actually install on the AC unit. It's called a Soft Start, and uh, the company that uh, makes them is called Micro Air, and their device is called the Easy Start. It's been around for a while, and I've been pretty familiar with this product. And there are other ones, but that's the one that I'm more familiar with. And the other option is also to uh, to get a new air conditioner, because the newer Air conditioners, like uh, you can find them on recpro.com. I think the manufacturer is Houghton, H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N. But they make a highly energy efficient uh, AC unit now that has that, that uh, soft start technology built into it. So you don't need this aftermarket piece to, uh, to plug into it. And I believe that the claim is that the, that particular roof mounted AC doesn't draw any more than 1700 or 1750 watts total. So that would be well under uh, what I could use, uh, what I could power from my inverter. Now, I went ahead and uh, went with the soft start option. I picked up a, uh, uh, an easy start from uh, Micro Air and it was like $299, so 300 bucks and uh, got that installed. Now the installation was uh, pretty straightforward. I, I followed the instructions that uh, were for my uh, air conditioner is a Coleman Mach 15 heat pump. There's a lot of people who uh, have made installation videos about this device. They're quite popular for folks wanting to run an AC unit on uh, small portable generators, but they can also be used for um, powering an AC unit from a small inverter like this too. You can't even really hear the compressor turn on when it does, so. There you go, you hear that? That's all there is. Now, I was pretty excited when the AC actually fired up for the first time, you know, after that uh, soft start device was installed. And uh, looking at my current draw, I realized that it was actually pulling about 110 amps from the batteries. That's at, say, at 12 to 13 volts. So that's about, what, 1300 or so roughly uh, watts uh, to run. And that was uh, much less than I thought it would be. Um, I wanted to really uh, try an initial test, even though it was late in the day, uh, there was no solar coming in at the time, but it was around 80 degrees inside the RV, and I set the thermostat for 74, and I let it run for a couple hours just to see uh, what it would do. Uh, 
after a couple hours it, uh, it, it, it maintained that 74 degree temperature and I uh, looked at my battery capacity. It started at 100% and then after a couple hours it was down to 80%. So it, it took off 20% of my overall battery capacity after a couple hours. Now what I really wanted to do was uh, do a real world test to see in a given day, like a typical day out boondocking when you got the sun shining and everything, what would that uh, really look like in terms of uh, the impact to my batteries, you know, with a little bit of help from solar. So I waited for a, a nice day where it was going to be nice and warm and uh, put it to the test. Now my goal was to see if I could maintain 74 degrees inside the RV throughout the day. So I went into the RV and set the thermostat uh, with the AC on for 74 degrees. But it was uh, still 68 degrees inside the RV, so it wasn't until noon or so when the uh, air conditioner actually kicked on. It ran for about 20 minutes the first time, and that was enough to get it back down to uh, 74 degrees, so it was probably only making up uh, one degree or so difference at that time uh, just to keep it at 74 degrees. And remember that the, uh, I already figured out that the, the air conditioner draws about 110 amps when it's running. But I had a little solar coming in and uh, I was taking notes as uh, throughout the day as I was sitting up here monitoring because I can monitor everything also here on my phone through the app. At that time I was pulling in about 33 to 35 amps from solar so it was only drawing between 68 and 72 amps from my from my batteries so not a bad split uh, with the solar offsetting some of that uh, power drawn from the air conditioner so at two o'clock in the afternoon you know the sun's shining pretty good and uh, still it's still maintaining about the same split of about 30 3 to 35 amps of solar and about 70 uh, amps from the batteries and the AC unit actually is is running from 20 to 40 minutes at a time as it got warmer and warmer it would run longer and longer and uh, by 2 o'clock my battery capacity was down to 76 percent and that's from a hundred percent at noon as it got later and later uh, it would start warming up a little bit outside even more and the air conditioner would run longer and longer. Now I checked again at uh, 4 o'clock and at that point my roof was already starting to get a little bit of shading because uh, the sun was going behind the trees so it was pulling more and more energy from the batteries directly and uh, that was causing it to drain even more and more. So by that point by uh, 4 o'clock or a little bit after 4, 4.30, my battery capacity was already down to about 50% of its total capacity. So that's why about 200 amp hours drawn throughout the day. But it was still maintaining that uh, 74 degree temperature. And that's pretty much where I stopped the test to see, you know, what it would take to actually draw the batteries down to 50%. You know, with more more solar, I could have probably uh, accounted for less battery consumption, but uh, this is what I have, and uh, I was actually pleased with the result. So what can we uh, learn from this whole experiment? Well, first of all, we know that uh, it's certainly possible to, uh, to run the air conditioner with a moderately sized off-grid system like the one that we have. But uh, keep in mind that, you know, while we were running it throughout the day, it was, uh, you know, running for, you know, several hours maintaining that, that 74 degree temperature. But while I was doing that, all of the solar that was coming in was actually going to, to run uh, the, the air conditioner and power the inverter, which is running the air conditioner. So none of that energy is really going back in to the batteries. Because the way that we operate when we're off the grid is that we need to put back into the batteries what we take out. So as long as we're running that air conditioner, we're definitely taking out much more than we're actually putting back in. So the uh, reality is that, uh, you know, say you move into the evening, you're using more energy. That means the next day you're even further behind in your battery capacity and you have more to make up 
uh, in terms of you know getting that that energy back so if you were to run the air conditioner another day it's not going to work it's going to drain that battery pretty close to uh to nothing the main lesson here is is uh if you really want to uh to run an air conditioner off the grid for an extended period of time you're better off just using uh probably a, a soft start device like the one i installed and a small portable generator even though it's possible to run off of solar and batteries like this I still maintain that it's not really a practical solution. Well, I hope this uh, little experiment helped answer some questions you may have had about running an air conditioner in your RV off the grid. If you still have questions, uh, feel free to drop them below and I'll be sure to get you an answer. I also really want to hear from you if you are able to actually run your air conditioner with your battery and inverter solar setup. And be sure to share your, uh, your system components in the comment as well so we can all learn from you to see what actually works. That would be very interesting to see. And as always, all the information uh, I collected and links to things are gonna be in the description, as well as a, a link to a video that uh, really helped me when I was installing that uh, soft start device. I hope you thought this was a cool video about uh, air conditioning if you did give it a thumbs up. And if you're subscribed, then I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So take it easy.